more wild action, new issues, and some unexpected heads to make for a truly exciting chapter. The battle at Onigashima is hype, and there has never been a better time to be a One Piece fan. Hello, my Nakamatachi, this is Joy Girl, and today we're going to discuss chapter 1003 of One Piece, Night on the Board, which was interestingly the same 20 pages as the last couple of chapters, but because of everything that happened, felt much longer. But before we get into all of it, I do want to take this time to encourage any newcomers or unsubscribed viewers to press that red subscription button and the notification bell for more One Piece goodness. We are an up and coming crew here at the Joy Girl channel and would love for you to come join us in our discussion of the greatest series. And with that being said, let's get straight into this chapter because there are lots to discuss. Similarly to how chapter 1002 started, Chapter 1003 began with a continuation of the previous chapter as we see Luffy attacking Kaido mid Gatling gun. I really like this style because it emphasizes the feeling that this is an intense ongoing battle happening and I think it works very well when there are no breaks in between chapters. And this attack goes on, in fact there are about 3 pages dedicated to Luffy just pummeling Kaido whilst the rest of the participants are jaw droppingly watching. In my opinion, this is a great, great way to achieve a number of things. Firstly, whilst this highlights Luffy's evolution and resilience, it further highlights Kaido's durability. So much has been said about how tough Kaido's skin or scales are, but this is the first time Kaido is shown to actually take on full damage from an attack because he's not able to completely tank it. Kid emphasized this in this chapter that all of Luffy's punches did full damage, so it's a great showing that Kaido's durability has as much to do with the fact that, yes, whilst there haven't been as many attacks able to inflict proper damage on him, he's also able to tolerate pain if the attacks do. So he's not just relying on this armor of thick layer of scales, which is a great subtle way to hype up your villain. So it seems that even though Luffy has mastered a more advanced level of Haki, this didn't eliminate the downscale of not being able to use Haki for 10 minutes following his attack, which becomes an even bigger problem or weakness considering who they're up against. Now that Luffy is incapacitated, I'm highly anticipating a great focus on the other four supernovas and it'll be interesting to see who will take over the somewhat frontline role that Luffy has had in this battle. Zoro or Kid feels like the two frontrunners based on what Zoro did this chapter, and in Kid's case, well, it's the opposite as so far an argument could be made that he's been the most underwhelming of this bunch, so I'm sure that there are greater reasons for this, and now we may be one step closer to seeing this now that more room has opened up for Kid to create some highlights of his own. Big Mum continues to be a problem as she tries to attack Luffy with a funnily named Happy Mother's Blaze, which did not land as Zoro saves Luffy. There's actually not much of Big Mum in this chapter apart from that quick attempt on Luffy and being finally hit in this battle thanks to Law's counter shock, Big Mum was pretty much just present to react to things that were happening, which did have its uses. Kid and Killer tried to take advantage of Kaido being down on the ground, but as they were approaching, the Yonko rises up and performed another ridiculous attack. Dragon Twister. Zoro said it best, Kaido is a natural disaster with all of these elemental attacks he's been pulling out of the bag. Which was also a nice callback to the last chapter when Kid said the same thing about Big Mom. In fact, the panel of Kaido's attack was very reminiscent to Big Mom's Tenjin with both their natural elemental attacks which cover a large area. And as Big Mom had her glory in chapter 1002, it's time for Kaido in this chapter. But back to Zoro, Man, oh man, was he good in this chapter or what? From protecting his captain from danger, to delivering his own dragon twister, to an actual dragon no less. Which is my favorite panel from this week's chapter. I just love seeing the evolution of this attack from the first time we saw it back in the Fishman Island arc, which makes me question whether Zoro only uses this attack against fish. But in all seriousness, how awesome is this panel? There was a lot of anticipation getting to this moment, but we're finally here. Zoro has cut Kaido. The awesomeness of Zoro's words prior to delivering this attack is what made this even better in my opinion. The official translation has Zoro referring to Luffy as our captain, 
and this felt like Zoro had the Straw Hat crew in mind during the battle, which can be interpreted as something that was adding fuel to his motives to make sure that Luffy is out of fatal danger because A, if anything happens to Luffy, the crew will be devastated, and B, the harder part of having to tell the crew that such a thing happened because whilst Luffy is yes, indeed the captain, Zoro's additional role in this battle apart from fighting is to make sure that both he and Luffy come back to their crew safe. There is a slight bit of dissatisfaction on my part though, and this is a teeny tiny microscopic one, and that is the fact that there seems to be a grey area when it comes to Zoro using Enma. As of this point, I sense a slight holdback on Oda's part in highlighting Zoro, as there seems to be too much focus on Enma as the sword being able to work on Kaido. Whilst the other participants are unaware of Enma's destructive power and just simply see things as Zoro cutting Kaido's scales, Kaido, who has experienced this in the past against Odin, is shown to single out the sword itself, which I'm sure and hope will change as the battle goes on. I see this as a good device to have Zoro evolve to another level and perhaps will culminate in Kaido finally realizing that it has less to do with the sword and it's more a testament to how great a swordsman Zoro is. Back to Kaido though, we had our third dragon twister, this time an improved version of what Kaido has been delivering and this one was called Dragon Twister Demolition Breath. The supernovas do a good job of parrying and avoiding this, but I gotta say, as cool as seeing Law avoid these air slashes, Killer is the one that really stood out for me. Seeing Zoro block Kaido's attack in the last chapter was so badass, and now Killer is doing a similar thing with multiple slashes whilst moving, which is a little detail that I'd like to show appreciation to. We also got an update of what's going on around Onigashima through the use of CPO agents and a go board. It was an unexpected inclusion which reminded us of how large this war is and all the players still involved. I also really like the dialogue in this scene, in addition to emphasizing the gravity of what this battle means for the world, it also adds that sense of urgency and perhaps doubt that this battle will go beyond Onigashima, as one of the CPO agents mentioned that we are on an island and there is no escape, which somehow says don't look at the battle beyond this stage because this must be settled here and now. Orochi's head was also shown this chapter and seeing this, two things popped into my mind. Firstly, is the ever-present question of whether Orochi is indeed dead or not. And secondly, if he is, his devil fruit must have resurfaced somewhere and could now be possibly in the hands of CPO. A quick question to you guys, do you think that's a Robin spy clone in the back? And speaking of spies, we gained information of what's happening in the battle more generally and the fact that 400 out of the total 5,400 of the alliance have already been taken down, whereas the beast pirates have lost 3,000 out of their 30,000. More interestingly, this information was told through a shamisen player who has the same single eye symbol drawn on a mask covering her face that Bao Hung also has. The way that she says Ow when referring to the beast pirates implies she's a part of Kaido's crew, which also makes sense as Bao Hung reports to Kaido directly, but this did make me wonder why is she sharing information with CPO. To my understanding, CPO was partnered with Orochi, not with Kaido directly. So did the world government's secret agents implant their own spies within Kaido's crew? Anyways, apart from showing that CPO is present in this battlefield to pick up the pieces, the scene also added much importance to the other players of this battle by emphasizing that the other members of the alliance, the Straw Hats in particular, must defeat Kaido's executives for this battle to be won because whilst the focus on previous chapters were against the Yonko, we can't forget that there are other fighters on the enemy's troops powerful enough to eliminate a huge number of the alliance at once. We get a brief update of the Straw Hats and Heart Pirates but the ones that stood out to me are Sanji and Tama, apart from my general excitement at that teased matchup between Frankie and Sasaki. Hey, I'm a simple person. But seriously, Sanji, because out of all of the other straw hats shown, his panel seems to be the most unclear in terms of what he's doing, as he seems to be now running, having been tied up the last time we saw him. 
So has Sanji escaped and now on the run from Black Maria's crew? And how did he escape? And in Tama's case, this caught my attention because in addition to the way she's pointing, which is unclear whether she's pointing Nami and Usopp to the right direction, perhaps has something to do with her plan, or if she's directing someone, perhaps the beast pirates she has turned to the Alliance's side, this caught my attention because of the Go board used in this chapter. It's no secret that Wano's theme is based on games, from card games to board games. But the interesting thing is that in Go, one of the objectives is capturing your opponent's stones, which can be achieved by surrounding them with your stones. But this actually made me think of Shogi, as in the Shogi game, you can actually capture one's piece and then use it as your own. Which is an analogy of how Tama's power works. Once she subdues the beast pirates, she can become their master and control them as part of the Alliance's forces. So Tama could both use her ability like in Go, where she can capture beast pirates, but also use it to command them under her will like in Shogi, and to see this little brave warrior command her own troop of beasts will be delightful in my opinion. Moving on to where the chapter ended, with finally the reveal, or well, kind of a reveal, of Kaido's hybrid form in silhouette. And I could not be more excited. We have seen how durable Kaido is in his dragon form, so it's hard to imagine just how much he will be able to tank in his hybrid form. If Oda continues the trend of picking up his chapters where the last one left off, it may just be possible we will see Kaido's hybrid form as early as next week. Which I'm not completely sure about, seeing as Oda also returned to the other stages of the battlefield in this chapter, so perhaps he may revisit some of the other players and is just teasing us with Kaido's hybrid form, which is to come later. All I can say is I agree with the Yonko and we'll have to take their words because this is fun indeed. And speaking of fun, we should also mention the cute and fun cover story we saw this chapter, where Reiju was gifted a cactus flower by an enamored scorpion, which I think is a sweet note on which we should end today's review. Feel free to stick around to watch my reactions if that's your type of thing, but also please share your thoughts on the progression of this battle by leaving a comment below. Please also like and share if you enjoyed today's video, and please also subscribe if you haven't already. This is Joy Girl, and I'll see you again soon. All right, chapter 1003 of One Piece. Let's go. Oh, what do we have here? We got Reiju. Reiju. That's so sweet. A cactus flower. All right, let's get on to the chapter. Oh, straight into the action again. Oh. Look at that glorious part, just... Oh my goodness. Oh, okay. So the all the supernovas are back up, yep. Yeah, except Killer, it seems. Big Mom looks scared. Look at that contrast between sort of the light and then just the shading, the dark shading just for Big Mom. Take this and this and this. Oh, love it. My goodness. Oh! Yeah, things are getting crazy. I almost feel bad for the skull of Onigashima. Oh, Kid's looking scared as well. That expression on Kid's face must be just, you know, a mix of sort of like fear and wonder, you know, like just, oh my goodness, who is this man in front of me? You know, who is this boy taking on Kaido? Oh, Luffy's getting a bit tired, but... He was wheezing before, now he's puffing here. But, you know, he's also tired out Kaido. I mean, probably not for long. I imagine he's back up. Oh, okay. Ten minutes. So we've got that time frame for Luffy now. Oh, Luffy looks wrecked as well. I mean, that is just the impact from, you know, Luffy didn't even get hit. Just the impact of being in that state and having to face up against Kaido. Oh. Oh, see? Look at that. Big Mom back up. Mama, mama, mama. Oh, Zoro coming in. Yes! Love it. So reliable. Zoro's always gonna be there to protect his captain. Oh, there we go. Okay, so Killer's up now as well. I love his sights. Ooh! Counter shock. Oh! Wow! Oh, there he is. 
Yep, kite is back up. What is that? No, what is that? Look at those tornadoes. Oh my goodness. Okay, what? Yeah, now that's a natural disaster. Oh no, he's let go of Luffy. Oh, 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 Kaida's on the chase. Jeez, you're kidding. Three sword style. <sighs> oh, Kaida's caught on to Enma. Hmm. Oh, look at Zoro's attack. Oh, Zoro, they are oh, Zoro for the rescue. Nice. Yeah, what a clever naming by Oda. And then a nice callback to last chapter where Killer said that he was going to penetrate through Kaido's scales and this time Zoro's actually done it. Love it. Yes! Saved Luffy. Oh yep, yeah, Kaido's definitely caught on. Definitely recognizes Odin's sword now. Ooh! Now that is wild! My goodness. Oh, we're seeing a little bit of what's happening downstairs. Okay. I was wondering when they were going to show Orochi. Hmm. Oh, okay. That must be the CPO. All right. Orochi must be coming back soon. I've been waiting for this. CPO. It seems like all the pieces are coming together now. Hmm. Yep. All right. There we go. We've got the CPO. Hmm, okay, so this is interesting. The CPO also have, I guess, some sort of like an information agent with the same symbol as Bao Hung. Is she someone that CPO planted? This is interesting. Oh, this is getting deep. We're getting right in the middle of all the adventures that's happening in Ongwana, all the different storylines. Feels like it's coming together now. Exciting stuff. Ah, Beppo! Love it! Seems like there's a bit of foreshadowing here with the with the board of Go. Ah, Frankie! Frankie and Sasaki, are we gonna see them soon? Yes! Oh, Sanji! I wonder what's happening now with Sanji. Alright, we've got Usopp, Nami. Look, Thomas even commanding them. It looks like Thomas commanding them. So cute! Ah, Jinbei! Yamato! Where is Brooke, Robin, and Chopper? Maybe we'll see them first, seeing as we didn't see them this chapter. Huh. What a, oh, what a ominous line. Just waiting. The CPO is just waiting for them to take each other out and they're gonna swoop in like vultures. Oh, no. His hybrid form, no. <gasps> We're gonna, oh. Oh. No way, no break next week either. Oh yes, this is getting fun. Yep, Kaido said it brilliantly. This is getting fun. Oh, I can't wait. I'm oh like, yes, there's no break next week. I mean, will we see Kaido's hyper form next week? I don't know, but still that is mighty exciting. Great chapter, another fantastic chapter. Needless to say, can't wait for next week. All right, bye.